I'm going to be doing my presentation on soap and surfactants, a topic that was barely glossed over in the textbook. We use soaps to launder our clothes in every wash, primarily through the use of liquid detergents. However, in trying to look up information on soap in our textbook, all it really says is that soaps are the sodium salts of a fatty acid. Similarly, surfactants are barely even brushed over and are simply defined as a substance that lowers or reduces the surface tension of water, allowing it to penetrate the soil. This is a terrible description of what surfactants and soaps really do for the laundering process though, and so I'd like to shed a little more light on them. Surfactants are effective at laundering because surfactants are what's known, in short, as an emulsifier. The full description though is that they are an amphiphilic compound. This means that they are a compound which contains both one side that is hydrophobic and one side that is hydrophilic. Therefore, surfactants are useful because they are both oil soluble and water soluble meaning that they allow oil-based soils to be lifted and removed by the water used in the laundering process. So now we briefly know how surfactants work. But how exactly do all these chemicals react to make soap? Well, soap is made from a fat or oil molecule reacting with a strong base, such as lye. This is what the chemical structure of a saturated fat looks like. On the left, you can see the purple head, which is a glycerin molecule. That is always the same. Between the glycerin molecule and the tails, you can see the oxygen bonds, which attach the glycerin head to the three fat tails. When a base such as lye is added to the fat molecule, the glycerin head is forced to break away from the tails. These tails are now soap molecules, and the little oxygen heads that previously connected it to the glycerin will instead attach it to the oxygen in water, while the fatty tails will attach to the oil-based soils. The reaction of lye that's turned these fats into soap is called saponification. Now it's worth knowing that there is a difference in soap made from saturated fats and unsaturated fats. Saturated fats have a more predictable molecule arrangement. This means that soap made from them has a more compacted structure of surfactants since the molecules fit together more neatly. This compacted soap has less room for water or unsaponified moisturizing fats in its structure and is therefore harder. This is why when we looked at a bar of old laundry soap a few weeks ago, it was very hard. Soaps like that are more effective at cleaning, but they also strip away more natural oil from your skin if used on it. If one did want to make soap for skin use, unsaturated oils would be preferred since these have a more kinky molecular structure. That means that the molecules don't stack as neatly and that bars of soap made from these fats don't have as many surfactants in them with more room between the molecules for moisturizing unsaponified fats and water and so don't strip away as much oil from the skin. They are much softer though and usually have to be mixed with saturated fats to hold them together. So after doing all this research on soap and how it's made, I decided that I wanted to see the saponification process in action so I decided to make my own soap. I looked into making laundry soap, but I'm perfectly happy with the laundry detergent I currently use, so instead, I decided to make bar soap for my skin. For the fat, I decided to use half coconut oil, a saturated fat, and half olive oil, an unsaturated fat. Then I had to think about the scent. I wanted to use something more natural than most detergents use, and went with essential lemongrass oil and rose water. Next, again, like many laundry detergents, I decided that my product should have some color, so I decided to color my soap with chlorophyll and turmeric powder since I already was headed in a more natural direction. Then I thought, since normally you combine a chemical cleaning agent such as laundry detergent with a physical cleaning process such as a washing machine, I would add exfoliating Himalayan pink salt and rose petals for a similar effect. So I gathered up my ingredients and I tried it. First, I had to pour my oil into my crock pot. Then I had to carefully measure out the correct amount of lye. This part was a little tricky since the measurements have to be very exact. Too little lye and you end up washing yourself with a bar of oil. Too much lye and you end up stripping oils from your skin and possibly even leaving raw lye in your soap. It was also difficult because lye is a very nasty chemical so I had to wear a mask and gloves and go outside while working with it. Next I had to carefully add my lye to the water. When water and lye are mixed together it creates a lot of heat so you have to be very careful to always add your lye to the water and not the other way around. It even gets hot enough that you have to let it sit and cool a little before adding it to your oil, which was the next step. Here I encountered a little bit of a problem in that my mixture broke. So unfortunately instead of it going from a liquid to something the texture of pudding, it went from a liquid to something the texture of Play-Doh that hardened almost instantly upon contact with air. Still, after about an hour of whisking and stirring the lumpy mess, I was pretty sure it was done. Strangely enough, despite all the warnings about how caustic and nasty the lye is, the way you're instructed to check to see if the mixture is done, to make sure all the lye is cooked out, is to touch it to your tongue. If it feels like the soap has given you an electric shock, then there is still some lye left and it needs to cook longer. 
Well, let me tell you, it needed to cook longer, and that stuff hurts. But eventually, after letting it cook for another 20 minutes or so, it was done. Once the mixture had finished reacting, it was time to add in the other ingredients. First, I added in my colorants, then my scent. After that, it was time to add in my exfoliants. Unfortunately, the dried rose petals discolored slightly, and I underestimated the amount of salt needed. Finally, it was time to mold it. Unfortunately, since my soap broke and became the texture of Play-Doh, it was a little difficult to mold. I ended up basically pressing little balls of it into the muffin tin I was using, and fortunately that more or less worked, though it did leave a weird pattern in the soap face. Still, once I had let the soap sit for a day, I was able to turn it out and use it. Despite my soap breaking, I still got to see the saponification progress in action. I've also been able to show you what harsh chemicals are necessary and what aren't in order to make soap, and what they all do. I hope that you come away from this presentation with a better understanding of soap and how exactly it lifts away the soils and lets them all be washed away. Thank you for giving me your time, and I hope you have a wonderful day.